Okay. Oh, oh. oh I, 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 think that, I think that that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Smriti. Uh, you, you, did, you, did an, you did an excellent job. Um, diagramming on the smart board using these lines takes a little getting used to. I do it a lot faster because I've done it more times than I care to count. But if you, uh, if you struggle with it a little bit, stick with it because we will use this mechanism throughout the year. And I'd like you to become comfortable with it because it produces very nice diagrams for uh, posting online or for saving and referring to at a later time. So this works really nicely. Now, she has properly identified signs and dent as the compound simple subject of this sentence. Signs and dent. Pumpkin is modifying dent. The is modifying signs, and for sales modifying signs. And she includes and as the conjunction joining the two on the dotted line in the fork. It's a nice job. Now, I'll do this since we're uh, running a little bit short on time. But uh, what about the simple predicate? Ian. Um, oh, we do have a compound predicate, don't we? This is actually not hard because and when I say when I say this is not hard, I'm shh. When I say it's not hard, that means that you have the knowledge right now necessary to diagram this structure. I enjoy it actually. I'm glad that you do. Ian has the same question that Taylor had. What do you do about a word that appears once but modifies both? For instance, the word the. You understand that the word the is not only attached to for sale signs, but also pumpkin dent. But we didn't repeat it. In English, we often remove words because their repetition would sound wordy. So I don't, I don't say the for sale signs and the pumpkin dent. I just say the for sale signs and pumpkin dent. You can see the same concept in math. I know you're, what? <laughs> Ms. Clarkson, what are you talking about? The negation on the outside of the parentheses transfers to everything in the parentheses, no matter what it is. This value transfers over to everything in there. This grammatical value transfers to not only that, but also that. And you, as an English speaker, understand it. You may never have actually thought about it, but you understand it. And if I repeated the word the, you'd probably say, that's unnecessary. That's wordy. Ian is identifying the same thing with really. He says that the adverb really modifies alter and it modifies disturb. Here's what you do not do. You do not make more words in the diagram than exist in the sentence. So you do not make a second the and place it under here. You do not make a second really and place it on both lines. You would place it on the one next to which it modifies directly. So first of all, I do, not or I do not repeat did. Technically, I have did disturb. Technically, and you understand that. But I don't repeat it. That's why I slash words. Because once I've di diagrammed a word, I'm not using it again. Now, some of you might be disturbed, saying, well, the not is important, and it modifies both of them. But 
a quick reader of a, or I'm sorry, an astute reader of a diagram would know that because this word here is here, that this value transfers through that over to that as well. There's an understanding of relationships in a diagram. Do not copy a word. Do not use a word unless it's in the sentence. Do not use it twice when it only appears once. 